It's a brand new year, and what better way to kickstart your 2022 than learning a new skill? Our guest, Chloe Tomomi, is a writer, teacher, and a watercolor artist. Art has played a major part in her journey traversing through anxiety and trauma. Now, she's sharing her heart and talent to those who would like to create mystical, poetic landscapes. In this episode, Chloe talks about finding the spark and falling in love with art, how one's creative journey is greatly influenced by the support and kindness of other people, art and its ability to heal and become a platform for others to be seen and heard, seeing the beauty and joy in nature and art as a way for self-expression. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etcherlab.com. Hey, this is Jesse from Etcher. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. Join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. How did I get started? Um, <laughs> well, I have to go all the way back to my childhood. Yeah, well, yeah. We would um, love to I was that. more of a writer. Yeah, I was more of a writer, actually. I, I still am. I'm, I'm more of a poet uh, than I have shared with anyone. Um, people don't know that about me, that I really love writing. Um, but I used to lock myself in my room when I was a kid on the weekends and just draw um, and create, like, uh, characters and write, uh, screen write, like, not screen right um yeah I would screen right but I would like create scripts and storyboards and so I was more into the story aspect which I still am but I haven't mm -hmm. really explored that in many years so um I used to do that I did a little abstract painting in high school uh, my teacher was really kind enough to let me play with all the paints and canvases I wanted when I had mm -hmm. free periods so uh yeah, maybe like two or three times a week, I would just have this uh, huge chunk of time in school mm -hmm. by myself to just paint my heart out when no one was around. And wow. I got to listen to Ella Fitzgerald and Frank oh. Sinatra. And it was amazing. I love that. Um, <laughs> and then I gave up on art for a few years because I think as many young people go through, we, we search uh, ourselves and we're not really sure what we, what we want to do. We have mm -hmm. a lot of people telling us that yeah. uh, art isn't profitable and it's not a sustainable thing to do. And of course I listened to those voices and mm -hmm. was pretty miserable for a while. But then uh, I was going through some mental health uh, hardships back then, um, I think back in 2000, 14, maybe 15. I'm not really sure. Um, but I made a friend at Honolulu Museum of Art. Someone introduced me to her, um, a wonderful uh, 3D more type of media person. And she gave me a Windsor and Newton watercolor palette, like a pan set. Yeah. And um, something in me just was so curious and like I felt something kind of like spark in here and I was like, Ooh. so I opened it up. I started painting and I madly fell in love all over again. And I was like, Oh, I should never stop doing this. Yeah. Uh, so ever since that moment, it encouraged me to be true to myself. And I knew that I wanted to master the subject, which I'm still doing. I still have a long mm -hmm. way to go, but yeah. Yeah. That's a very inspiring and moving story that you just shared, Chloe. First off mm -hmm. is that you love to write. And I, I thank you for sharing that because I, I think I, th this was a book that I read, uh, Keep Going, and that he, he mentioned something about when, when you are an artist, it doesn't have to be that you're just an artist, artist alone. You can be more than that. Um, but you always need to keep a little bit about yourself, a little bit of something that you don't publish to the marketplace. And I, I think with you, it's writing. And you said that you love poetry. I mean, that's yeah. another side of you that people don't get to see um, that often, but it's in you. But talking about creativity and art, 
So when you started, uh, Chloe, was it already landscapes that you started playing around with? Or was it like a different subject? Oh, that's a really good question. It was a different subject. It was awesome. more fantasy. Uh-huh. Um, it was, there were a lot more people involved because I wasn't really, in the beginning, I was just playing around. I was experimenting completely. Um, so I, it's interesting. Like, I feel like I had so much more freedom back then to be creative because mm-hmm. I, nobody know, nobody knew who I was or um, I wasn't known for painting. I was just a person mm-hmm. who just had a lot of trauma to express and heal. And I just wanted to paint my feelings. That's really all I wanted to do was just paint my feelings and paint something that made me go, wow, you know? Um, and of course it started to feel good when other people, when I got to share it and other people were like, yeah. oh, you might have something here. Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So during that time, and you mentioned that you, you were also going through some mental health issues. And from, from that story, it, it, it seems as if art has really helped you in a way heal. So during that time when you were like tr- expressing your feelings and that you said, you know, those traumas that you've had through your works how long has it been from the time that you started and slowly before you transitioned to landscape well the landscapes came a little later um, Mm -hmm. because I was really thinking about what inspires me or what actually makes me feel peaceful amongst all of the uh, yes like trauma and anxiety that was occurring and I noticed that I really like nature, going for walks or hiking, um, really connecting with the lessons that nature can teach us, even if it says nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think my brain works in a, I don't know if you do MBTI or anyone does MBTI, I do. but I'm an INFP. I'm an INFP. Okay. So. In other words, that means that uh, most INFPs, if not all of them, really think more in metaphors and uh, we're very poetic and, oh, there you go. We've come full circle. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We're very poetic and we think in analogies. Mm -hmm. So being out in nature, like for example, seeing the sunlight coming through the forest, like through the trees and lighting up a part of the path when everything around it is dark. To me, that was extremely meaningful because it's, you know, I felt in my life like there was so much darkness surrounding me, Mm -hmm. but the fact that there was this beautiful light coming through all of this uh, dark, like this, this very, I can't explain it. Like, you know what I mean? Like it, Yes. The light shouldn't be there in the dark, but it was, and it was just so beautiful. It lit everything up and it, that spoke to me a lot. And I, I realized, I think quite subconsciously, I processed that. I wanted to express that in my work. Um, and so nature actually was able, like it was such an incredible subject to harness light, in, which is really what I wanted to do was harness light in dark places and so a lot of my earlier landscapes were very dark and shadowy Mm -hmm. and the light was really intense yeah and I kind of lost that along the way just because I've been more into the technical part of it and just teaching uh workshops has kind of made me think about painting in a more technical way Mm -hmm. but whenever I challenge myself to go back into that way of thinking of like, what am I, what really drives me forward here? It's, it really is the play of light and shadow, not only on paper, but in life. And that's what inspires me there. So landscapes just became my main focus because it was a great vehicle to uh, allow me to do that. That's beautiful. What you just shared, Chloe. And I think (laughs) think that what you mean by, you know, because I, I paint as well in watercolor. And when you were sharing about you were just walking like, in the trail and then it's, let's say it's dark and there's like 
the sun is like peeking through the branches of the trees and then landing its rays onto the ground where everything else is dark. There's just something like what you said, poetic about it. And that really reflects in your works. Whenever I look at your, your works, because whenever I interview artists, I tend to look at their works, like what they posted on the gram, just to get a feel of what their art is trying to convey to its audience. And I get that feeling from, from your works. It's, soft it's magical and there's some peace that I get when I look at at your works and that speaks a lot I believe for for an artist to be able to express that and convey that message to its audience of course art is dependent on everyone's else's interpretation but from my end that's how it made me feel your works so let's talk about the style of painting um, that you have you you mentioned earlier there were like people and then you transitioned slowly um, to landscape. Was the, the the technique that you, that you were discussing earlier when we started teaching workshops was that always been the technique that you had or that was that the technique that you were aiming to be really good at or was it something that accidentally you just discovered? Oh, I see. It's a little of both. In the beginning, mm -hmm. I had no technique because I was just painting mm -hmm. my soul out, all my feelings out. I didn't really care about technique um, mm -hmm. right in the very beginning. I just wanted to paint my feelings and get color on the paper and just create random things um, that pleased me. <laughs> um, but eventually when I started getting more serious about it, that's when I started watching a lot of uh, videos on YouTube, just watching people paint and taking notes and trying to figure out now how, how in the world did they get from that to that? And then yeah. I just kept replaying things over and over and taking notes. Mm -hmm. And then I would get my paints in my paper and I would try what I'm seeing mm -hmm. and I would keep messing it up over and over and over and over until finally it just, it just clicks and then you just get it. Uh -huh. It's just a matter of repetition. And so um, I kept looking at artwork around in uh, around the world, whether it was just on Pinterest or YouTube mm -hmm. or Instagram or in a museum. And I just kept questioning myself, like, what makes it look like that? And just really thinking deeply and mm -hmm. questioning and then going home and experimenting. Um, and then eventually I took a beginner's watercolor course in college, just, just uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. um, and the te my teacher, Jan, was really wonderful. And he taught me a lot uh, because I knew that I had potential to paint. Mm -hmm. I was just lacking some basics, un like basic understanding of what makes art uh a little more impressive or a little more technical right to say the least um so I did that and I learned a lot and then I started buying more books looking up techniques learning the terms making up my own terms as I went along mm -hmm. um and then I found an incredible artist named Andy Evenson I think that's how you say his name mm -hmm. uh, he's a master watercolorist in the world and he is a huge role model of mine probably my favorite watercolors ever and I've taken a few workshops of his and that really took me from my earlier understanding of watercolor to a very advanced view mm -hmm. of watercolor and so if I can give advice to anyone who really wants to master the subject any subject that you're doing take a workshop, like save up and take a workshop from your role models or the people, like the artists that you really admire um, because that will, that will change your life. It will change the way you paint for sure. So I would say Andy had a lot to do with my shift from how I used to paint to how I paint now. And he continues to inspire me. Yeah. That's a really good point, Chloe, because I think it's a common theme that I'm getting from the interviews that I've had with several artists, watercolor, is that 
they had a mentor or that they took a class and talking about teaching. Right? So given the, the influences that you've had, you know, being mentored by someone and you took a class, only, only it was just one class, right, that you took up in college. How did that influence you in your way or teaching others now that you are okay. our teacher? Okay. Well, it was very inspiring. And I thought, I mean, this might kind of sound uh, bad. And if my teachers, uh, my mentor and teachers are watching now, I'm so sorry. But I would, I would um, learn, I, you know, I would observe what they're doing that's working. And then I would also observe what are the questions that I keep having? Like, what are the gaps that they might be missing that I, as a student, really want to understand that I'm just not hearing from the individual? So when I teach, uh, I try to explain very thoroughly and I try to show wrist movement or techniques or give really odd uh, tips because I know that that's the kind of stuff I wanted to know and was asking the stuff I'm still asking because I'm still learning I will always keep learning yeah um (laughs) but I try to think of it from a beginner's point of view where they have no idea or they have very little idea of what's going on but how how can I as a teacher take them from not knowing much in maybe a couple hours to having a lot of confidence in this new skill or Mm -hmm. um, this new way of painting. And I want to equip them with every ounce of knowledge I have and explain it in multiple ways that, and give multiple examples, because I feel like that's really the best way to, to learn from a teacher is to see it over and over in different ways. Um, And I think the other, just, I don't know if I learned this from other teachers that I've learned from, but just personally for me, teaching is really about encouraging people. I just really love seeing when other artists feel so insecure and nervous in the beginning, but then towards the end, they feel more confident, they feel empowered, they feel like, oh, hey, I, maybe I can do this too. And we all can. Mm-hmm. You know, I really think that the best painters, they weren't the best painters when they <laughs> were growing up. They had to learn too. Everyone had to build these skills. So I think a huge part of teaching is all about the encouragement and helping people believe in themselves. Wow. Coming from a, from a teacher herself. Thank you, Chloe, for that. And I, I asked that question because I, you, you, you did your live demo with us and you just did during this, the recording of this interview, you just did your mini workshop. Can you share a little bit more about the mini workshop? I, I know you do landscape, like magical, mystical landscapes, you know, and soft water colors, but can you share a little bit more as to what you did for your students during your mini workshop? Yes, I actually have the painting here. Perfect. For all you listeners and viewers who are watching on YouTube, (laughs) you'll be able to see it. So this is what I taught today in the mini workshop. It's a winter landscape with some warm tones and then surrounded by cooler, grayer tones. This was the original and this is the one I painted today in class. I taught that, so it was good. And... Something I think unique about my style of painting, Mm -hmm. just based on the feedback I've gotten from students is that um, I break down the painting into different layers and techniques, and then I teach them how to accomplish each. So this way they can get familiarized with it first, Mm -hmm. make all the mistakes they want. (laughs) And then once, and it also helps them to see the pieces of the puzzle. Right. And so when they actually get to the main painting, they have more confidence. Mm-hmm. They've done this before at least one time. So 
I really enjoy doing that with students. It makes, I can tell that it makes them feel more confident in what they're doing, mm-hmm. which is the goal. Right. So <laughs> thank you for sharing the painting. It's so good, especially the one that you just did. Oh, for workshop. If you can put that up a little, uh, if you can put oh, that up sure. again, fully. Uh, I would just like to highlight for anyone who's watching YouTube, like the snow on the on the leaves of the, the trees looks so real. You can literally oh, see like, you. The, the snow is like they're falling onto the leaves of the trees. And it makes it yeah. so magical. Like you can actually feel as if you are part of that scene that you're there looking at yeah. the tree and it's winter, cold, but it looks so magical. This is so thank good. you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. So, and oh, and this is yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. This is the one I'm doing for the master class. Oh, so yeah, it's another winter class. one. About the master class. Yeah. This is right. So why the reflection of like the water and uh, the reflection of the branches. You know, it's it's like a dead tree, right? A winter dead tree, but the, the the way the light is just reflecting, like shining, like in between the branches, and then it's reflected onto the water, like just so magical. Oh wow, people you should so definitely much. check out your master class. I I do have a hard time reflecting that. I think it's in one of the interviews that I've had with some artists. It's always a play with light and shadow that you know, most artists kind of struggle with. So if you were able to capture the light in the way that it reflects, especially on water, I think that is a feat. And that is definitely level up for, for someone who's doing watercolor. So the master class is happening in January. When is it um, scheduled again? It's January 3rd. January. January 3rd. Okay, awesome. So if you are planning to kick off your new year, uh, learning something new, the play of like light and how it's reflected in water landscape, winter landscape, then do check out the master class of Chloe. And by with the feedback that we've gotten from your new workshop, you, you saw, if you're watching this, if you on YouTube, you saw the breakdown of the step-by-step. And I think that's really when you, when you were sharing about your style of teaching, that you break it down and you fill in the gaps because you place yourself in the, from the position of the students. What are the questions that they have? And I think that what's that what makes you an excellent teacher because you always you're always putting yourself in their shoes and thinking about the questions and then the caps and you know beginner's mindset because I think that's really important especially for someone who would want to start you know making art makes it more accessible and um, not intimidating. Well, we're all still students, even the masters. If if like a master watercolorist you know, thinks mm-hmm. that they're not learning anymore. Right. I think that would be a sad day because I think we should all keep learning and trying to expand. And so I'm still a student and I, I've just been doing it longer, mm-hmm. you know? So <laughs> I just want to help other people who want to get from point A to point B. Um, I just want to help them feel more encouraged that they actually can. I think that's a that's that's very encouraging as well when you say that everyone can paint. You know, people, oh, yes. people yes. think you know you have to be really good at something to get started. But what what you mentioned earlier that you can you absolutely can, um, especially when you have a mentor like Chloe. Uh, if you follow <laughs> her live demo, if you want to get a feel of how of her technique. Uh, her live demo is up on YouTube at Etcher Studio. So you can check that out as well. Chloe, I'd like to ask something because you mentioned about poetry and I was checking your gram earlier and I, I was wondering, have you ever thought of incorporating both? Like your writing and then your painting. I ask this because um, I know that I, I interviewed someone who's also a writer, a New York bestseller on the, on the podcast. And it amazes me how she is managing to merge those two together and so you know wear that artist hat and the writer's hat all the same time oh I love that yeah. um yes yes I have thought about it mm-hmm. I am currently revising a lot of poem drafts right now 
-hmm. And my plan is to make it into a book with watercolor illustrations to go with with each. Um, And so (laughs) really make it into a like a journey from page one to page, you know, whatever the end. So I that's actually something I'm very nervous about because I've never done it before. I'm not known for my writing. (laughs) I think that I'm a good enough writer, but I don't know. I I think there's a part of me that's nervous about that. And, uh, you know, but I don't want fear to be the reason why I don't do something. So it's in progress and I'm really excited about that. Yeah. That would be, I I just hope that would be a treat for anyone who will be getting a copy of your poems and then your watercolor illustration. So no, oh, <laughs> I I hope there's a market for it. I hope people aren't just like poetry. Ew. Oh, no, <laughs> I don't want to read. I don't want to read. <laughs> I, I like. I want like my poems are very. Hmm. They're very personal, and they dive very deep into emotion and honesty, raw honesty. So. I would hope that if I ever did release a, a book like that, mm-hmm. that the person reading it would be able to feel no longer alone. Like mm-hmm. if they're feeling lonely or misunderstood or brokenhearted, that reading the book would give them comfort and hope and they would feel seen and heard. So. It's interesting because this leads into my own philosophy of art, Mm -hmm. of my own art and writing. I really believe that when you're creating the painting or you're writing the poem or whatever it may be, it's an act of empathy towards yourself first because you really have to look at where you're at, Mm -hmm. feel your emotions, acknowledge them and express them. And then when you can share with other people, it's an act of, it's like sharing that empathy. It's empathy for other people as well, because then they're able to share in your pain or your joy or whatever it may be. And healing can take place. Joy can take place. Um, And I think that's a really beautiful, magical superpower that art and writing or really any type of uh, any type of art can can bring so <laughs> I just that's I what I hope thinking like please go on um because <laughs> I, I love poetry I love poetry I love reading them but I also love art uh, and to be able to capture that and you're absolutely right because it has a way of bringing in joy peace and healing and to be able for someone who's reading and looking at a painting the ability of that piece of art to make me feel as if I'm seen and heard, that's empowering and liberating at the same time. And I hope that you will push through with it, um, Chloe. I believe that from what I've heard as you were you know, sharing your story and your journey as an artist and as a writer, you have so much heart to give to your audience and to people. And we need that right now more than ever. You know, for someone to be able to share their heart, for someone to give a platform that will allow others to feel that I'm not alone. And if your art and your writing can do that, imagine what it would be like if that's going to be like a ripple effect. It will have like a domino effect rather. Yeah. The world will be so much better. Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Make More Art, the podcast is made possible by listeners like you. So we would like to give a shout out to Anastasia Vishnevsky from YouTube. And she said, thanks for sharing this. I'd curve up some creative time, but was feeling completely unmotivated. Went for a walk and listened to this podcast. And now I'm eager to jump in. Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Um, Chloe, we're nearing the end of the, the episode. I don't want to get it. I don't want it to end because I, I really enjoy our con- I'm enjoying our conversation. But for most of our listeners, they are beginners. Um, and you've shared different 
you know, trinkets of wisdom earlier when you're touching on like techniques and putting yourself out there and starting one painting. But if there are like, let's say three golden nuggets that you would want to leave our audience or our listeners um, for this episode, what would they be? Well, the first one would be if you are a beginner, if you can afford it at this time in your life, go for the high quality paper. And it, depending on the type of art you're doing, I really recommend using tube watercolor, not the pan set. Pan set is totally fine, um, especially for plein air or just simple illustrations. Pan sets are lovely and wonderful. But if you're going more into very expressive, very uh, hardcore painting, yeah. you might have a very hard time trying to get enough paint out mm -hmm. of a pan set than you would um, with a tube of paint. So I would say get the, the good type of paper. Um, if you wanted to do more landscapes, in my style, I would go for a cold press paper. Because, you know, if you're trying to paint and master these techniques and you <laughs> You're looking at the teacher and you're like, why can't I do that? It's not coming out the same way. Yeah. It might just simply be your paper. It might not be your fault. It might be the type of paint you're using. It could be the quality of the product. So if you can afford it, um, if you can save up for it, I, I would recommend that. Um, the second golden nugget <laughs> would be do not give up. And I know how plain that sounds, but it's very true. I used to sit at my desk for about 10 hours a day, and I did this for months in a row. 10 hours a day, I would sit there and practice watercolor until I could get it right. And can I tell you, most of the time, I did not get it right. I would just sit there for hours, just going through all this paper, practicing techniques, getting frustrated, getting inspired, getting sad, being happy. Um, <laughs> Holy emotion. It would take, yeah. sometimes it would take days for it to finally just click in my head. Oh, you know, and then my brain would just get it. But just because you're not getting it right the first several times, uh, change course if you need to, you know, adjust like, okay, this isn't working, let me try this. Just keep going. It will get better. Uh, building up skill and technique, especially in the beginning, can be very daunting, but it's worth it. And you can do it. And there's not anything wrong with you. It's just, it just takes some time. And that's a beautiful process. It's a beautiful thing. Good things take time. The third golden nugget would be to get out there and paint outdoors. Hmm. And I, I don't do it enough myself, but whenever I do, it is quite challenging with the wind and the bugs and the dirt and the random pieces of whatever just flying into your, your watercolor mixes. But you know what? Painting from real life is really fun. And usually plain air doesn't come out that great, which is totally fine. But mm -hmm. something about it, the information, the things you learn while you're out there just seep into your brain. And then when you get back into the studio, at least for me, it just, you just have a better understanding of stuff. So if you're painting nature and landscape, get out there and try to paint it. You know, pack a little bag, pack a little travel kit, um, bring like a bottle of water and a little cup and pour that, you know, just try to get out there and get some fresh air. Be safe, be safe. But yeah, that would be my third tip. Thank you, Chloe. Those are amazing tips, especially for someone who <laughs> is thinking of, should I try watercolor or any kind of media? You know, art can, like what I said, can be intimidating for a lot of people. But hearing those three golden nuggets that you just shared, I hope that they will be inspired to make art and to get started. Just go ahead and start. Um, well, you know, you never know. You might think, oh, I couldn't do that or that probably isn't for me but then you try it once and it could just set off this chain reaction yeah so what's the harm in trying 
True. What is the harm in trying? That's a really good question. Yeah. Chloe, thank you so much. And again, congratulations on your mini workshop. And I look forward to your masterclass. What you should share it earlier, you know, the painting um, for anyone watching on YouTube again, you can check this out. That is what Chloe will be doing for the masterclass. I really love the reflection. I, I would probably watch your masterclass too. That's really good. I have to say. <laughs> so yeah, uh, everything that you shared, I and please continue to write. And if if you would want to merge those two together, I think it's going to be a wonderful thing. It's going to be a beautiful thing if you can do those two and put it in a book. Um, it's very kind of you. <laughs> but thank you again for for sharing and you know what you learned from from those wonderful artists. Um, I think it really takes courage to be able to do that, um, to teach, because not everyone believes that they can. But if you have something that you can share, I, I, go ahead and share it, just like what you did. Um, so thank you again. Um, I know it's summer in Hawaii, and I'm kind of jealous of your weather, but Merry, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year, Chloe. Thank you again for being on Make More Art. I really enjoyed our conversation, um, especially what you share. It's just so beautiful. Well, Merry Christmas to you too. And thank you for having me. It, it, was, a, it was a wonderful time. Thank you, Chloe. Please Make stay more safe. art. Thanks for <laughs> art. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, stay safe. Um, I know we're like continents away from each other, but it's been amazing meeting you uh, through Etcher and through this podcast. And again, look forward to your masterclass. Thanks, Chloe. Thank you so much. Great. Have a great nice meeting day. you too. Okay, bye. You too. Bye. I had an amazing time speaking with Chloe. Art truly is a vehicle that will transport us to different paths and opportunities. I learned so much from the insights she shared and made me appreciate the lessons nature is telling us. What about you? Have you ever taken the time to stare at how beautiful the light shines and peaks through the leaves? Have you tried interpreting them into your painting? Do let us know by sharing your comments to the blog post associated with this podcast at naturallab.com slash Chloe. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast or you can find us on YouTube at Etcher Studio. And, oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.